Welcome back to the Plays With Cards YouTube channel and the first episode of a new segment we are calling Tech Talk. Today, we're talking about brakes. Not just any brakes, track brakes. Now, what do I mean by track brakes? As opposed to, say, uh, high-performance street driving or drag racing or autocross, track racing, and I'm talking HPDE, track days, open lapping, time trial, time attack, door-to-door -door racing. If you are going around a road course, you are going to have heat buildup that is not involved in other forms of motorsports. And the big thing with track brakes is managing that heat. And what we have here are the two major kinds of brakes. You have a sliding caliper and a fixed caliper. And we're going to go over the differences here so that you understand what we mean by track brakes and upgrading brakes when it comes to driving a car around a road course like we do at Portland International Raceway with our project cars. Now, these particular brakes are the factory fronts from our 2011 Audi S4, a 333 horsepower supercharged sport sedan. And you can see they're pretty decently sized looking. But once you get inside, there is just one piston right here. That piston is the only thing that actually moves with the hydraulic force. So when you press on the brake pedal, hydraulic fluid goes from the master cylinder through all the lines into the caliper and extends this piston. You can see it's even partially extended right now. Then this whole caliper, this whole caliper body slides on this bracket. You can see the uh, little metal tangs here where it would actually slide on these. And you can see they are seriously dirty, beat up, scuffed, not very uh, smooth and nice looking. In fact, you can see here the wear marks from where the caliper sits and slides on just one small portion of that whole round piece of metal. What happens is as the brakes get hot, this metal expands and all of these pieces expand and the holes get looser and the caliper can rock. And when the caliper rocks, it can get caught on these metal tangs and actually seize. So it can keep it from moving, it could keep it pushed in and keep this pad working and this pad doing, or uh, keep this pad working and then this one is the only one that retracts and comes back and forth and you wear out the outside pad really bad. It can do the other way, it can freeze in the resting position and now the piston is the only thing moving and the inner pad gets all the wear and the outer pad looks like brand new. You can also have it get cockeyed in there where it freezes on one side and not the other. And then every time you apply the brakes, it gets uneven and you get really gnarly uneven wear. And it's also really, really easy to overheat these because you just have one piston. You're putting all of the heat into one part of the caliper. The other thing is these things are heavy. These are made of iron out here and the bracket is iron. So what we have here is a scale to show you just how heavy these suckers are. We'll get it on and tear it here. All right, zeroed out. We'll put on our caliper and our bracket. We've got 16 pounds and two ounces. Bring that in there for you to see. 16 pounds, 2.2 ounces for one factory. Oh, you know what? I'm missing a, a pad too. Throw a pad on there. 17 pounds, six ounces for a factory break. And you've got one of these on each side. So you're looking at 35 pounds of caliper and bracket stock. Now these are the four piston fixed calipers, which we'll talk about here in a second that we replace them with. These are aluminum. And even if throw a pad on there, you're looking at 10 pounds, six ounces. So we've lost over seven pounds per side of unsprung weight moving from these iron calipers and brackets to our aluminum fixed four piston calipers. Now, what do I mean by fixed? So as opposed to the sliding caliper, which has to slide, remember, on these metal tangs or slider pins, the fixed caliper stays in place. You can see that the bracket is built into the body of the caliper. The whole caliper bolts onto the car and doesn't move. You have pistons on the inside here. So pistons on the inside, 
and pistons on the outside. So when you press the brake pedal and the master cylinder pushes the fluid through the brake hose into the caliper, all four of these pistons expand in and squeeze the rotors with your pads. This makes for much more even braking pressure and it allows for more heat dissipation. You can get a larger pad with more surface area being pressed on it, no chance of rocking back and forth or having any kind of misalignments, and they just work way, way better. There is a reason every single track car that you can buy and every single car that you see on track in a professional racing series uses fixed calipers. So they are full of nothing but ups. The downside on these is basically just they're expensive. These calipers are, oh, I think between 350 and 450 a piece by themselves. Whereas these calipers you could pick up for less than a hundred bucks. So it all comes down to cost. But when you're out on track, driving around lap after lap and you're trying to stop your car from 100, 110, 120 miles an hour, like we were seeing at PIR lap after lap after lap, for 20 or 30 minutes in a session, you're gonna want something like this. Now, this is a very popular upgrade to do to cars that came with sliding calipers. For example, the C5 Corvette Z06, like the one we used to have, although it was a multi-piston setup, so it was a sliding caliper, but it had more than one piston in it, it was still a sliding caliper. And they are notorious for failing almost immediately on track. So any C5 Z06 that you see out on a track day that's been to more than one has something like this bolted onto it. Usually a six piston affair from Willwood or something like that. You can get these with crazy numbers of pistons on them, uh, but very common are four and six. You're starting to see eight kind of float around here a little bit. The more pistons, the more heat dissipation and the better um, like even uh, application of the pad and just the more pad you can get. So instead of just having a pad here, you can have it be, you know, more of the percentage of the rotor. Um, but there becomes a law of diminishing returns. Once you've gone fixed, everything after that is incremental. The main thing is just to make sure you have a fixed caliper to start with. Now, we've gotten lucky with the B8 Platform S4 that these particular factory calipers from a different model just bolt on. Not every car is that lucky and has that kind of compatibility. Sometimes aftermarket is the only way to go. Sometimes you have to swap whole knuckles in order to have mounting points. Sometimes you need a, an adapter bracket that would kind of look like this, but without the, the metal things on it, that would just be able to bolt from one piece to another piece in order to put these on. But if you're gonna go out and do track work, the very first thing you should look at upgrading on your car is the brakes. Now, when you do the brakes, you also wanna make sure that you have a pad that is capable of performing on the track without overheating. And the wonderful thing about these is they're super easy to change the pads on them. So you can totally have a street pad for the street, bring your track pads with you, swap them at the track. There's just retaining pins that hold them in here and then run your track day. And when you're done, pull those pads out, put your street pads back in and away you go home. You don't have to unbolt the caliper like you do with sliders. The only way to get a pad out of a slider is to unbolt it. The other thing you're gonna want is good brake fluid. This is what we use, uh, any brand will work. The big thing you wanna look for is DOT4 and have a good, nice, high quality to it. The best brake fluids are gonna come in metal cans. Uh, they have more volatile chemicals in them. The plastic can ones, if you read the MSDS sheet, you will see they are not as good even if they are rated DOT4. Uh, ATE makes a really good Type 200 racing fluid. This is what we use, but again, any brand will work. You just want DOT4. You want it to be a good quality, a name brand. Uh, racing fluid is great, and you wanna make sure it comes in a metal can. Check the MSDS if you are unsure. So hopefully that has explained some stuff about brakes to you. If you didn't quite understand what we mean by track brakes in our videos where we talk about driving around a road course and why it's so important and the differences between a fixed caliper and a sliding caliper. So if you have a performance car and you want to go out on track, go look at what you have. If you got this, chuck that thing and get you some of these. If you do have these, you're in good shape. Make sure you take care of your pads and fluid, and we'll see you out on track.